Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega for the IWGP US title. God damn, this is incredible. An incredible, beyond belief wrestling match. This was one of the best matches I ever saw. Yeah. I got to say that. Yeah. I don't know where I would rank it in terms of uh, greatest matches I ever saw, but it was it was definitely one of them. Somebody asked me, how did this compare to their match at the Dome? And the answer is, y- you can't really compare them because they were both... It would be like if you, if you asked me, uh, would you like a Wagyu ribeye or a Wagyu New York strip? I was like, I can't fucking answer that question. Keep both. Or if, you, or if you said, how do they compare? Well, they're both different, but they're both fucking awesome. So anyway, yeah, I can't I can't really say wh- which one was better, but as far as like crowd reactions, I think that there were two spots in this match that uh, because of the reaction they got from the crowd, uh, one of them being when uh, Will hit him with a V trigger, and then Will hit him with a one winged angel, and Kenny kicked out of his own finish at one. At one. I think that that probably maybe bumped this past the Tokyo Dome match, but like if you, I, I don't want to fight over it. If you thought the Tokyo match was better, who gives a fuck? It's an opinion. But uh, I thought this match was absolutely, absolutely incredible with uh, two small... Well, one was a big exception. I would say they were both kind of... Anyway, go through the match and I'll talk about the... Uh, well, I think I know both of what you're going to say. Issues. I yeah. want to talk about one first. I want to get it out of the way because I did just complain about it in the uh, Willow Nightingale Between the Storm match. And there was a lot more interference in that one than there was... And that was, that was a, like a 10-minute match with five minutes of interference. This Omega Osprey match was like a 40-minute match with perhaps two minutes of interference at the most. But Don Callis was getting involved like crazy at the end, physically involved, grabbing guys and putting them out of the ring and all, st- all that stuff, and uh, passing Osprey a weapon, the screwdriver, of course, to use. And uh, it would have been irritating anyway, but there was a point about 10 minutes of this match, and not even that, like early, uh, he trips Omega and got ejected. And then he just came back. Yes. That's dumb. See, here, here's the deal. If he had never gotten ejected... And he was kind of getting involved, and then he slipped the uh, the screwdriver, and then, you know, Will hits the screwdriver shot, and he does all that stuff. And then Kenny kicks out. I actually wouldn't have had a problem with it, because when shit like that happens and leads directly to a finish, I get mad. When shit like that happens, but it actually is only leading to a great near fall, and the finish is coming further down, the- it doesn't bother me as much, but... If WWE did the same thing, I'd be just as furious. You can't kick a guy out and then just have him come back. Like, you can't do that. There should have been some sort of explanation or, you know, I I don't know if this needed a ref bump, but, like, Callis cannot just come back. I mean, okay, fine. It's New Japan. They don't do disqualifications. Whatever. You got to at least try to eject the guy again. It was like he came back. The ref looked right at him, and the ref's like, nah, I'm busy. It's like, fuck, you sent the guy out 20 minutes. So that that was irritating. But, like, I would have been really furious if if Callis would have been ejected and then came back, and his interference and screwdriver directly led to the finish. Then it would have been like, bro, what's going on, okay? But it didn't. It actually led to a great near fall. Yes. The, the, the other thing that really, and it's it's, you know, I hesitate to say it's nobody's fault because, like, they actually did it, but that fucking... Uh, Tiger Driver 91. Which, by the way, Vinny, mm. this guy landed on his head, yeah. and I was gravely concerned that he was seriously injured, Yeah, and I, I tweeted about it, and these fuckers on my timeline were more concerned that I didn't properly identify it as a Tiger Driver 91... And they didn't give a fuck that the guy landed on his head. It was like, you must call it the right name. Like, fuck off, people. He got dropped on his head. And it was not like, you know, sometimes there's an illus- Ill- illusory nature of some of these these uh, head right. drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was not anything no, like that. No, his shoulders did not hit the mat. His arms and back did not hit the mat. His no. head, with his brain it, inside it, of it, hit the mat. And not only that, like, his head hit the mat, and then his body fell on his head. Yes. And uh, I thought he was dead. Now, here's the thing. Kenny, it's one of those deals you hear in wrestling. Kenny is fine. Okay? He's told people he is fine. He's seemingly fine. 
But the thing is, a lot of people say they're fine, but they're not fine, okay? When Ricky Starks took that, uh, he tried to flip over and he landed on his head. Yeah. You know, he finished the match. He went backstage. He was mad about it, but he was fine. And then, you know, later it turns out that he broke his neck. So if it were me, if it were my company, I don't care if you feel fine, you say you're fine, you know, whatever. You got to go get your neck x-rayed because, you know, that's the kind of thing where you could break your neck. And I, I hate to bring this up because it's horrible, but, like, the other thing on Twitter was, he's fine, he's tough. You know, this move's been used. Yeah, this move was used a lot in all Japan. And uh, and eventually, Misawa took a, a backdrop driver and died. He got internally decapitated. Mm-hmm. You know what that means? That means your neck was severed. Your spinal cord was severed inside your fucking neck, okay? So, uh, you know, it was not that one bump that it was years, internally decapitated him. Years and it years was, of falling on his head. It was taking Tiger Driver 91s and getting dropped on his head. And that's the issue. The issue is not the one bump that you get up from, yeah. and then you go to the back, and then, you know, you move your head like this, and the doctor goes, oh, it seems like that. It, it is, that's not good for you, okay? So I think that he should get an x-ray. I think he should have his neck looked at to make sure that he is okay because you cannot always trust that you're okay. You should probably be examined. Now, aside from those things, I mean, the, the work of both of these guys was absolutely incredible. I mean, it was one of the best matches I ever saw in terms of the story they told, mm-hmm. the stuff that they did, what it, like... It, there's 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 doing matches and then like everything is looking so great everything is looking so crisp you know the the pacing of this match like people always talk about oh, all the moves all the high spots dude watch this match and watch how much of the match isn't moves oh yeah probably probably 65 70 percent of the match is not moves it's it's the reaction to the move the selling of the move the uh, uh, setup in between moves, the playing to the crowd. I mean, this was the psychology in this match was incredible. The storytelling, the psychology, the storytelling, the, the work, yes. all of it. It was it was absolutely unbelievably. And the crowd. I mean, the stuff that they did and the stuff they, you know, the spots that they chose to kick out of, and you know, kicking out of that one winged angel at one. He could have kicked out at two, but he kicked out at one. And it made the match so much better. It got one of the biggest pops you'll ever see in an AEW ring or any ring when he kicked out of his own move at one. I mean, I just thought this match, you know, aside from uh, getting dropped on his head and almost killed and just the fact that Callus came back and was allowed back. I mean, taking those things out, I mean, this is up there as like one of the greatest matches you'll ever see in your whole life. So I mentioned that there was a lot of history in this one. One of these things, of course, was Omega Osprey 1, where if you uh, have not watched that match or have watched it recently, it's a very different Kenny Omega. He's a psycho killer Kenny Omega, more than a great athlete or wrestler or showman or any of that. He's trying to murder Will Osprey with as much blood as possible. So this is Osprey's chance for revenge at that. And, uh, you know, the big spot in, in that one was when Omega, uh, when Osprey went to the table and put a big hole in it. And Omega picks it up and does the Shining reference. Here's Kenny. Uh, so um, Osprey wants his revenge. They're fighting outside, and Osprey, they wanted so hard. They got that the the, the, the announce desk and that, that that panel on top of it that that's on top of it for just for decoration. They were trying so so hard to put Kenny's head through it, but it's too bendy. <laughs> they tried like three times. They slammed his head into this desk so hard it would not break. And finally, like they leaned it up against the uh, the uh, the ring at an angle, like slammed him through it. It still only bent. It didn't really break. But uh, regardless, that was enough to. You know what though? Mm. That's one of those things that uh, just made this match so great to me. And that is that everybody watching this, everyone listening to this right now, I'm sure at some point in your life, you have pretended to bonk your head on something. Whether it's, uh, you know, you're walking with your kids and there's a street sign and you pretend, ah, I banged into it or whatever. Everyone's done this. Maybe you've had a friend pretend to bang your head into something or whatever. Did you see what I did there if you were watching on video, by the way? Mm. I put my hand up. Because everybody knows when you're getting slammed into something, you hit your hand on it. You hit your hand. That's how you make the sound. That's how everybody in wrestling does it. But then there's Kenny. And he did not use his hand at all. What he did was... Will took his head and went to throw him in, 
and Kenny had both of his hands by his side, and he went in, and he, he kind of put his shoulder into it, and he hit his, his shoulder. But it looked like he just got his face smashed really hard in this fucking table. And he did this three times, and every one of them looked so fucking great. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter to me that the table didn't break. It's like, I know how everybody does this spot, because everybody does it the exact same way, and Kenny decided to do it a different way. It's kind of like when Ric Flair does the flare flop. It's like he falls forward. If you do the flare flop, you fall forward and you land on your, your shoulder. It looks like you land on your face if you're on the if you're looking at the right angle, but you didn't. You landed on your shoulder. Kenny took these these head slams into the table this exact same way. It looks so fucking great. And it was just everything they did in this match was here's a little extra salt and pepper to make it look a little better, a little crisper. I mean, God, they were fucking great. They were both so great in this match. So Regardless, and I shouldn't say regardless, because you, you make a very good point. But Kenny goes into this table and he comes up bleeding. And uh, as mentioned in the first match they had, Omega was a psycho killer, and Osprey was the victim fighting for his life essentially. Well, now the tables have turned, and this is Osprey's chance for revenge. And he's working over the cut and beating him up and tearing him open. And then there's a <laughs> he gets blood on his arm. And he goes to the center of the ring. I swear to God that this is what I'm about to tell you. He he stretched out over one minute of great theater. And he stands in the center of the ring, and he looks up at his muscular left arm, and he flexes his bicep, and there's some of Kenny Omega's blood. And just standing there, and standing there, and standing there, and looking at it, and he very slowly reaches up his arm to his face and sticks out his tongue just a little bit and just licks the blood just a little bit. And the whole building is chanting, you sick fuck, you sick fuck, you sick fuck. And Will slowly turns to the camera and just almost winks and just says, yep. And he moves on. <laughs> Will was awesome in this match. <laughs> also awesome, by the way. Uh, as I understand it, and I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Uh, this is basically really as an, all, an AEW show with New Japan talent and, of course, New Japan input of things. But the camera work on this show was amazing. And that's usually where New Japan outshines everyone in the world. There is a point where, uh, it's, it's right after this, in fact, where uh, Osprey has Omega draped across the ropes to hit the V-trigger, and he does Omega's taunt with a finger gun pose and all this, and the camera work they have of Omega's face against the ropes in the foreground looking under his face at Osprey in the background, it's, it's art. It is just art. That's all it is. So we go from a slasher film to Osprey's outside taunting the fans and boy these fans are taunting him and oh look one of them has a Canadian flag and Osprey had grabs that flag and suddenly it's Brett and Sean in Montreal before the finish yes, yes. because and actually it was before even that there's a little kid in the front row yes and and this kid starts yelling at Osprey so Osprey goes and he starts cutting a promo on this kid and this this kid screams shut up and the whole fucking <laughs> building heard it, and they start cheering for this kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then Osprey sees the the flag, and he grabs the flag. And first, you know, he does the the Shawn Michaels, you know, super porky deal with the thing. And then he tries to stick in his nose, but it won't stick in his nose. And so then he goes to a spot, and Kenny fucking hits him with his Larry. He takes a flip bump. Yeah. The flag goes flying. Kenny now grabs the flag, and even though it's a Canadian flag, now the fans are like, you can use it as a weapon. We don't give a fuck. So he starts choking the shit out of Will with this flag, and he's hanging him with the flag. And then at the end, he takes a flag, and he gives it to the kid that told Osprey to shut up. Yeah, he doesn't give it to the flag owner. He gives no, it to the other kid. He gave it to the kid. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. Now, here's why they made all this so really, really, really great. If you're watching this, like, in... in, in uh, uh, if this was a 100% real fight, Kenny's comeback at this point would not have made a lot of sense. It was a weird time for that to happen. But it's what the crowd wanted to see right then. And the crowd is sick of Osprey watching this, you know, rubbing his crotch of this flag, rubbing the flag in his crotch. And Omega knows the crowd wants to see him make a comeback now. So, God damn it, it's time for the comeback because the crowd wants it. And he gave it to him. And uh, obviously they're going to have the spot where Omega slammed Osprey's face into the stairs and made him bleed. But uh, they did that, and then Omega was immediately cut off and then went right back to the heat. And uh, part of this feud has been Osprey insulting Canadians. If you have not checked out Osprey's videos on social media of his trip to Niagara Falls, go watch them. They're brilliant. <laughs>
but there's i want to say there's one well actually brian you can relate to this he's got like the, the pink plastic poncho on and they're on the boat that goes down by the falls and it's a hundred mile an hour winds and he's sopping wet and he's just miserable <laughs> So he's been. Yeah, it sounds about right. Hating Canada for a while, so he cuts uh, Omega off. He starts using the, the submission holds of famous Canadian wrestlers, Bret Hart, Sharp, Sharpshooter, some of the guys, Crossface. He's inviting Kenny to chop him, but Kenny's just out of gas, and he can't. He's hitting chops. There's nothing behind him. So Osprey is gonna mercy kill this fucker. It's end this. He goes to the os cutter. Omega does the most casual. That's not the right word. He's exhausted, but. He takes half a step back. His head doesn't move. His arms are down by his sides. He's able to raise one knee and catch Osprey in the back of the head with his last gasp. It's the best cutoff. We're 30 minutes in at this point. It's 30 minutes that has absolutely flown by. Uh, they start going back with a few more big moves. Uh, here's where Callus returns. Uh, Kenny even at one point stops his offense to point at Dawn. Make it very clear everyone knows he's there. And we have the part where uh, Omega hits the V trigger, but Don is grabbing Osprey's arm, won't let him be pulled back to be pinned, and he passes Will the screwdriver. Now, I complained about this earlier, because again, shows like Forbidden Door, I don't want interference, but if you're going to do interference, get the absolute most out of it. Don passes the screwdriver to Osprey, and Osprey's got it, but then he's grabbed from behind and hoisted into the air as Omega is going to go for the one-winged angel. So Omega is walking around the ring with Osprey up on his shoulders, which means the whole goddamn world, except Kenny Omega, can see Osprey hold up that screwdriver and stare at it. And he knows this is his chance. And fuck this guy, by the way. Omega tried to kill him in Japan. So he jabs Omega with that screwdriver. He follows with a hidden blade. He follows with a stormbreaker. It would have been a, well, horrible finish, but it would have been a believable finish. But Omega gets just barely gets that foot on the ropes. They got the absolute most out of that screwdriver. That was an incredible spot. That was incredible. But then, and you've talked about it, what followed next was like the, the greatest thing I ever saw. Osprey said, that's fine. He's finished. I, I'll, I'll pin him now. I'll hit, the, his I'll hit his friend's finish, the Kamigoye of Ibushi. I'll hit him with his own one-winged angel, and I'll pin him in his home country. And he hits a perfect one-winged angel, and he hits that leg, and the referee counts one and omega pops to his feet and explodes everyone is jumping up and down going crazy i don't know if i can call it a near fall because he kicked out at one it wasn't that near but that was like the best non-pin pin attempt i ever saw in my life omega's running wild he's hitting all his big moves they're going back and forth here is where the Stormbreaker and the Tiger Driver 91 occurred i thought my neck was broken from watching this move i screamed very loudly and uh, Omega did kick out of that, but it was... He didn't kick out much longer. Oh, Osprey had one more hidden blade, one more Stormbreaker, got the win to win the U.S. title. Unbelievable match. Unbelievable. Yeah, it was It was an all-timer, dude. It was an all-timer. And again, I mean, you know, I wish they would have had some sort of explanation for Callus coming back because the actual spot that he was involved in led to that incredible, incredible, incredible near fall. I don't know if maybe you could, uh, instead of having him ejected, maybe had somebody, you know, chase him off or something, or I don't know. But, you know, it, the spot itself was, was absolutely incredible. And I wish he wouldn't have dropped him on his head. I mean, if he hadn't dropped him on his head, it would have still been one of the greatest matches I ever saw. And I actually probably would have liked it even better because I wouldn't have been worried that somebody killed themselves. So... Yeah, this was, uh, I don't know what Dave will give it, but on a five-star scale, it was five for sure. If you want to go up to seven, I'm sure it was probably seven, but man, it was a goddamn fucking awesome match is what it was. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate you, Wow. Sean. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow, look at that, everybody. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's I prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet. 
Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's not the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Dreisack and Ideal Mexican. Mexican. Mexican yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His <laughs> panties. Yeah, he saw his Dreisack. <laughs> S-A-J-W-N. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.